A few months ago, I made a video about the environmental impacts of chocolate. While I was doing research for that video, I stumbled across a bunch of journal articles that were kind of related to the subject of the video, but I realized they deserved a discussion of their own. So today, I'd like to explore the concept of eco-labels. The studies I first encountered were all trying to figure out if and how eco-labels affect how people make choices about purchasing products. This is really interesting to me because it sits at our favorite intersection between social and natural sciences. But first, what is an eco-label? You've probably seen tons of them before, but you may have never noticed. Eco-labels are icons or verbiage included on packaging that are intended to tell you something important about how that product was produced. These aren't just claims of being green. They're labels that require companies to volunteer for oversight and certification in order to earn the designation of being environmentally friendly in some way. And putting evidence of this certification on the product in the form of a special label is intended to inform consumers while they're making purchase choices. A quick search revealed four research studies that investigated how these labels affect consumer decisions. All of these sources are, of course, linked down in the video description. There was a bit of overlap in what they investigated and what they found, so I'm just going to summarize all of their results together. First, let's take a look at the demographic results the researchers found. Middle-aged, high-income, and or highly educated people identifying as female were more likely to be interested in eco-labeled products and to say that they were willing to pay more for eco-labeled products. This doesn't surprise me at all, because being middle-aged and high-income means a person has the financial flexibility to pay for more costly certified items. And as far as the prevalence of female identifying people in this group, take a look back at my video on icing and our discussion about how some men may feel emasculated by the idea of going green. Next, what labels are consumers most likely to be motivated by? Multiple studies revealed that people are more interested in buying products that are fair trade certified than are certified organic or have other environmentally friendly labels. The researchers suggested this might mean people are more interested in buying products that help other people than that help nature. I feel like that's more than a little ironic, considering we all rely on healthy ecosystems for our own survival. But we know that humans are bad at thinking about distant consequences, and also that understanding wildlife conservation is confusing and unfamiliar to many people. You know what else is interesting? A large proportion of the people surveyed in at least one study said that knowing the origin of their chocolate or other products via the labeling is extremely important, but most of them had never purchased chocolate with an eco-label. This highlights the attitude versus behavior problem that we encounter a lot in environmental education. Maybe the people answering that survey question wanted to sound like good people who care about the environment? Or maybe they ideally want to value the origins of their food, but they don't have the time, knowledge, or financial resources to make decisions matching their ideal values. Regardless, our interactions with the environment can be summed up in a common adage. Your actions will speak louder than your words. But the thing I thought was most interesting and important about the results of these studies is another reason why people might be reluctant to purchase eco-labeled products. They're confusing. Several of the studies found that some people distrust the eco-labels because they think the labels are just marketing ploys, meaning it's often not clear that these labels indicate a certain quality of certification. Mistrust can also be cultivated when a person doesn't understand something, and eco-labels often aren't very clear about what they mean or how they're earned. Additionally, some people conflate ideas that aren't necessarily related. For instance, a lot of people think that organic means healthy, but an organic cookie will usually cost you the same number of sit as a regular cookie. One of the studies found that a lot of people assumed fair trade labeled products were also organic, but that's not always the case. So why are eco-labels so confusing? I stumbled across an amazing resource called the Eco-Label Index, linked down in the video description. Even though most of the information on this website isn't free, I was able to pull enough stuff for us to continue to explore this idea a little further. The Eco-Label Index, as of March 2021, has information on 450 56 eco-labels used in 199 countries. 
there are around 200 active eco-labels just in the United States. So it's no surprise that most of us might see an eco-label and have no idea what it means. There's no way we could keep track of all of them. I decided to pull the information for some of the eco-labels I've seen before so that we can get a better idea of what some of them mean. Dolphin Safe is a label you'll find on cans of tuna. You might have some idea that this label means the tuna has been caught in such a way to protect dolphins from harm, but it actually means the tuna product has to follow five strict requirements in the way it's caught and processed, including fishing boats having to have independent observers on board to make sure all of the rules are being followed. Since I mentioned free trade earlier, let's take a look at what it actually means. Although free trade products often consider the environment in their certification, mostly this label indicates that the products have been made and sold in a way that creates better conditions for the people making the products, who often live in developing parts of the world. Energy Star is a label you may have seen on some of your home appliances. So now we know eco labels aren't just for food products. An appliance can only earn an Energy Star label after following specific efficiency and emissions rules regulated by the EPA. Another eco label for some we can't eat is LEED certification. A building can be labeled certified, silver, gold, or platinum based on a variety of regulations for every step in the building process, from planning and design to construction and use. LEED buildings often include native and or sustainable building materials, energy efficient lighting, and sometimes even advanced ecosystems like rainwater capture for toilet flushing. I was surprised to learn that the recycled symbol doesn't really count as an eco-label because there isn't necessarily a certification process involved. Producers are allowed to put this label on their products as long as they include at least some material that's been diverted from the normal process of waste disposal, either pre- or post-consumer, but the companies don't have to document how or when they recycled those materials. But I'm sure the labels you're most interested in are the ones we find on food products associated with the USDA, or the US Department of Agriculture. USDA organic means that a food item has been produced without the use of conventional synthetic pesticides and fertilizers radiation, and most forms of bioengineering. This can mean that organic products are healthier for the person eating them, but it's not a guarantee. Organic is more about a product's effects on the environment than its effects on you. The USDA has a bunch of other labels you might be interested in, like 100% grass-fed, humanely raised, cage-free, no added hormones, and antibiotic-free. But none of those technically count as eco-labels because they're not indicating anything about the environmental impact of the product. Still, it might be illuminating for you to learn more about what each of those labels mean, so I've left a link to a useful PDF down in the description. So what do you think? Are eco-labels confusing to interpret? Do you consider eco-labels when you're shopping for products? And would you be willing to pay more for products that are better for the environment? I'd love to hear your thoughts down in the comments. If you liked this video, don't forget to like it. If you didn't like this video, please share it with someone who would. And if you'd like to support The Roving Naturalist, remember to hit the subscribe button and the bell notification icon. Then go check out my Patreon page. You can also follow me on Twitter and Instagram. As always, thanks for watching and I'll see you next time.